I want to run this clip, okay, of Deuce Vaughn, the running back from Kansas State's father, who works for the Dallas Cowboys, calling him and letting him know that the Cowboys will be drafting him. You cannot write scripts like this. Let's go ahead and play it. Hey, buddy. How's it going? Hey, it's going good. This is Dad. My phone wasn't working. Look at here, man. You want to come to work with me next week? <laughs> I wouldn't mind that. At all. <laughs> <laughs> I got somebody to want to speak to you. I don't know when I've been speaking for everybody that's really in the heart of the Dallas Cowboys and is standing here with a tear in our eye. We're yes, so sir. happy to have you on the Dallas Cowboys. I can't thank you enough. Well, what I really want to say, you earned every ounce of me being able to make this call. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and that, that's an incredible story. There, it's one of many incredible stories. I mean, you look at, at the coincidence of his father being on the team that drafts him, and, and obviously football is a huge part of that family. And I'll say this, Deuce Vaughn, that, that's no charity case. Oh, like, this, this dude can play. He's an NFL player. Uh, you know, I think I don't think he's going to be Austin Eckler. They're different. I think Austin's a little bit more physical. Obviously, he's bigger than Deuce. But there are ways, especially in the red zone, that I think Deuce Vaughn can help teams. Without a doubt. Uh, but but I do want to say, I mean, not not just that one. I mean, you look about guys getting drafted in the fourth round, obviously guys in the first round that are there. But it's it's that moment of, of again, a- anytime you work hard and you work long for something and it works out and you're part of such a, a rare and small group, I think it's what, 0.01% mm-hmm. of football players make it to the NFL. And a lot of these guys come from from bad socioeconomic backgrounds, and you're not only changing your immediate family's lives, but you're changing your grandchildren's lives. And maybe the direction that your family name was going, you're, you can be the catalyst to help change that. So it's it's you hear a lot of uh, grades. This player's a great player. This player's overrated, this, that, and the other. And all that may turn out to be true. It is a business, and business has no emotion. But on draft day, when you get that your name called and, and you get that phone call, it is such a special moment. It's a weekend where dreams come true, man. I mean, my childhood dream was to play in the NFL. I never got a chance to have one of those calls, but I'm so I'm so I, I'm always rooting for the guys who do get a chance. And some of the guys who I I got a chance to play with who went on to the NFL, I told each one of them, I said, Hey, go live that childhood dream for all of us. And I hope that they're grateful, just like Deuce Vaughn was and his father was, because that right there was absolutely amazing. And for Jerry Jones and the franchise to be able to do that, and like you said, not getting a charity case, I mean, that kid's an unbelievable football player. Dallas doesn't have Ezekiel Elliott anymore. Tony Pollard's going to step up into that number one role. Deuce Vaughn could be a great compliment right off the bat for getting 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 him the football and helping the offense. Yeah, he could be, and I think special teams too, return mm. and punt. Little guys like that are very, very hard to tackle in open space on special teams when you're looking at punts and kickoff returns and things like that. It used to scare the hell out of me. Dree Archer, who is you know, mm. quicker than a hiccup, mm-hmm. little guy for Kent State, but every time he touched the ball on special teams, you just held your breath. Because again, it's it's like me. It's not easier for me to catch my lab, all right, or a bigger dog than it is for me to catch Millie. She's so low to the ground. Mm. It's just a different angle. It's like being in a different world. It's like being Ant Man and going in the quantum realm or whatever. But Blaine, I I want to say this too. There's another side to the coin. Some guys get taken later than what they thought. Like you look at a Will Levis. We've seen in the past Aaron Rodgers, Lamar Jackson, guys like that. But your family is there to support you. And just on the high times, the low times, you need him as well uh, for that night that, that may be filled with disappointment. But Will Levis, of course, ends up going to the Titans. Hey! For some reason, we just can't have nice things. Are we surprised? I'm, no, I'm not surprised at all. Uh, but uh, that's a big part of it, too. Well, the thing about this is the cool thing about the draft. You, ha- you have your feel-good stories, but then villains get created as well. Yes. And Will Levis will now have that villain mentality walking to the NFL, not getting drafted the first round. And I felt bad for Will to a certain extent because he did come out on the podium before and he's like, look, if I didn't know I'm going to get drafted high, right, I wouldn't go. Right? He says, if you know you're going to get drafted high, you go. I don't want to be that guy in the green room sitting there all depressed because I didn't get drafted where I thought I was going to be in the first round. Well, that's the exact thing that happened to him. <laughs> it's that's, not his fault. He, I know it's, it's not his fault. It's the media's fault. I know it's not, not his guy, fault. Telling this guy it's still sucks. Number Mel Kuyper, again, yeah. Mel Kuyper just robbing everybody blind. Robbing they everybody them. They blind. They That's what they did. But they like the, it's the NFL to push false narratives when it comes to the draft. I mean, it just pushes eyes, right? I mean, why not go out there? If you're Mel Kuyper, who do you trust more, the weatherman or Mel Kuyper? 
I don't know. Well, I don't know. Mel Kuyper's really good. I'd come there and tell you exactly what doesn't need to happen. Yeah, fade him. Fade, the Transylvanian special, fade the guy. Uh, I, but I do think I wonder how many of these teams and executives, it's so important that you have guys that are tight with the media who can maybe influence or maybe say, hey, I need you to put this out here, misdirection. Like, I don't know. Maybe the Texans at oh, yeah. number two, not taking CJ Stroud, which you called from the beginning. Had to. Uh, there's a lot of... It's misinformation or propaganda oh, yeah. that's out there to try and get people to, to do certain things. So if you're tight with guys in the media, you can kind of spin it and spin it and spin it. Uh, but again, man, I, I just laugh because Mel, you know, Mel Kuyper is just like, hey, Todd, 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 Todd. Will Levis, top five pick. Definitely top five pick. Uh, it, there's no doubt about it. Go ahead and book it. Put all the money on it, Jake. Take all your money and put it on DraftKings, Jake, because Will Levis is going to be the fourth overall pick. The man doesn't even go in the first round. How do you miss that bad, though? How do you miss that? Look, it's one thing. Hey, man, I had him going number three, win 11. You know, our Jalen Carter, some had a number one, he goes nine. I can understand that. You miss the whole first round on a quarterback? This isn't a left guard that's getting overlooked because he's from Western Michigan. This dude played quarterback in the SEC. Mel Kybert just looked at everybody and lied. And after he got past a certain pick in the first round, you knew he was going to keep falling because quarterback is not that sort of position where it's mm -hmm. like, well, we can just take best available now. Yeah. It's like, no, once you get to the back end of that first round, those guys have their franchise quarterbacks Titans locked up. Titans could have took Hendon Hooker. <laughs> you guys. And you know what? I hope I'm wrong. I've got, like I said, I've got no ill will toward Will. I didn't mean for that to come out like that. But the tape doesn't lie. You know what I did? I watched the tape, and I watched him play at Kentucky. <laughs> you got the fastball. Congratulations. By, by the second inning, if that's all you got, they're hitting him off the scoreboard. And everybody's just, it's a beer shower everywhere. You got to wear a poncho out there. Yeah, and honestly, he's in a pretty good situation. He I is. Think he Hooker is. Hooker is too. Will Le Levis and Hendon Hooker. And we were talking about Stetson Bennett a little bit, getting drafted yeah. by the Rams. All three of them are in pretty good positions because you look at Will Levis specifically, you're coming into a Titans team that has, at least for the past few seasons, had a, had a really good defense. You have an elite running back, at least for right now, in Derrick uh -huh. Henry. And you don't have to start right away, right? Ryan Tannehill is going to be the starter, but he's not a Hall of Fame guy that you're sitting behind you have to follow up. So really, there's nothing but upside if you were to come. And you also got a tackle who's going to be pretty good, yep. too. Yeah, well, you're in that, you're going to be in that honeymoon phase where you're the backup quarterback. Everybody knows Ryan Tannehill is yep. the guy. They don't believe in Malik Willis, obviously. So who's going to be the most popular guy? Mm -hmm. Will Levis, Will Levis, Will Levis. I think he's going to have a shot to get in there, but it's going to be a lot of turnovers early. And again, I, he's got to be able to develop more than one pitch, and it's really late in the game to develop that. But it's hard for me not to sit here and, and say the Eagles. That's the easy one. Howie Roseman's just been getting showered with praise, and he should. I mean, I mean, they got everything that they needed. A lot of people say they won the draft. I just, I really liked what the Texans did. Mm -hmm. Because it's one thing to go get a top level, and I think C.J. Stroud's going to be a top level guy uh, at, on one side of the ball in the first round. Well, they got two. Will Anderson Jr. is my best defensive player on the board. And like I said, for weeks leading up to the draft, people say, why? Because Jalen Carter is a phenomenal player. Uh, Tyree from Texas Tech's a phenomenal player. There's some really good DBs. Uh, you know, the Gonzalez kid, Witherspoon, Joey Porter Jr. But if I'm going to, if I'm going to hire somebody and I can pick from anybody, I want to take the guy that's the best at the most stuff. Will Anderson Jr., there really isn't anything on a football field that he couldn't do. I think he could play zone coverage over a number one wide receiver if you put him at seven yards and told him to backpedal. <laughs> Not that he'd be great, but he'd be good enough. You can use him in so many different ways, and D'Amico Ryans has a piece now that you can put all over that, all over the box. You can drop him. He's great in exotic pressures. He's able to, to run the hoop and get past the tackle, but he can take on the pull. He can spill it. He can box it. He does a little bit of everything, and you know that they know that you know, that we know, that they know where Will Anderson Jr. is on every play, and you can dictate your game plan around them having to know where Will Anderson Jr. is. I so I'm going to go with the Texans as my first big winner. Then obviously the Eagles there uh, with, with, what they, with what they added. Those are my two biggest winners. Uh, and with my worst, I, I've got to go with the Titans, number one. Uh, I wanted to go with the Lions, but they did some things in the back end. Getting Branch from Alabama, I'm telling you, that kid at yeah. safety is a special, special player. That was a nice pickup. Made you feel a little bit better. But I'm just looking at the Titans. You know, you trade A.J. Brown. You draft Malik Willis. That doesn't work out. I, I just, I question, and, and you, got, you, you got a nice piece at, at, uh, at tackle. 
But man, I just question the direction of the Titans right now going into the season because outside of making free agency moves, I love Traylon Burks, man. Love him. I think he's going to be a really good player. But they have nothing on offense. Nothing really. You got Derrick Henry, but behind that offensive line and aging Derrick Henry, what's he going to do? I'm not taking him in fantasy again. So, you know, when, it, when it's easy to sit here and say, oh, well, this was good, this was bad. Uh, it, but I, I just I don't understand what the Titans were doing. And then, then the Lions early, I felt like they just wasted their mm -hmm. first couple picks. That's what I feel like. Well, the Titans, I think, got off to a good start when they didn't go get Will Levis or reach for some of these other quarterbacks we were talking about at, at pick 11. Right, because that's what we were thinking. They go offensive line, they go left tackle to replace our boy Taylor Lewan, mm -hmm. but then eventually get uh, get Will Levis. So I don't know, a little bit confusing there. But like I said, at least Will Levis is in a good situation, and who knows, maybe there's maybe there's upside there uh, if he can spend a season or two sitting behind Ryan Tannehill. I don't know, but to me, uh, if we're taking the Eagles out of the equation just because they just they drafted so well, to me it's the Seattle Seahawks. Man, really for the game. second straight year. I mean, last year Pete Carroll was able to get four or five different players out of the draft who ended up being starters on, on a team that ended up being so much better than what we thought, right? You, you get rid of Russell Wilson, Geno Smith becomes a starting quarterback. We're all thinking they're going to have a three or four win season. Uh-uh. Pete Carroll had something up his sleeve. Once again, this guy, he just, he puts together an incredible draft. The uh, Devon Witherspoon kid, he had his pick of the litter at cornerbacks. Now, I still really like the Christian Gonzalez kid that fell to the Patriots, who I also think had a great draft. And I like the Emmanuel Forbes kid. We were talking yeah. about him from Mississippi State. Yeah. But Pete Carroll, a defensive-minded coach, got his pick of the litter at cornerback there. And then at pick 20, a wide receiver hasn't gone off the board yet, and you go get the best one, I think, in this class in Jackson Smith and Jigba, the former Buckeye. You add uh, Derek Hall, uh, you, the, the you Auburn Graham? kid, you know, the sure defense. Zach Charbonnet, also in the second round. I think they had four picks in the first 52 or something like that. So you go get Zach Charbonnet from UCLA, the running back. The the uh, Kenneth Walker Charbonnet one-two punch in Seattle is going to be. And legitimate. I believe they got Kenny McIntosh from. They got Georgia Kenny McIntosh too. from I mean, Georgia. That young running back. And in between Charbonnet and Kenny McIntosh, they got Mike Morris from Michigan, who we saw him just get after quarterbacks all season. And then Michigan's center, uh, the the Remington Which we winner, Ola Timmy. Bowl. So what the Seahawks put together was just incredible to me. And then I, the Bills, too. The Bills got two of the better offensive players in their first two picks, and the Dalton Kincaid kid at tight end, and then Osiris Torrance. We were wondering yeah. where Osiris— I thought the Bills could go get him in with that 20, what they have, 25, 26, something like that. They ended up getting him in the second round. I think that's a great pickup for the Bills. I, is, uh, I, I agree. And looking at the Seahawks wide receiver core, adding Jackson Smith and Jigba to Tyler Lockett, and DK Metcalf. I mean, Tyler, I know he gets beat up and hurt, but the man does nothing but get 1,000 yards every season. Mm -hmm. We know DK is a monster on the outside. Now you bring in a young guy that's not the number one wide receiver for your team, which is going to help Jackson Smith and Jigba get a lot of single coverage. They're going to look at DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett and try and take those two away. It's going to give Jackson Smith and Jigba some time to cook, which builds confidence, which can turn you into an all With that running game yeah. and the type of season that Geno Seahawks Smith had. Seahawks are trending up, man. Replicate the Kraken one last night. What a time in Seattle. I know, no doubt. Um, and then uh, my worst from the weekend, just what Deion Sanders had to say about the draft. Now, he congratulated one of his former HBCU players uh, for getting drafted, but then said, Deion Sanders said, I'm ashamed that the other 31 teams couldn't find value in HBCU players. This guy, I don't dislike Deion Sanders. I grew up a Florida State fan. I, yeah, I grew up a, a, a Deion fan. But to me, you had an opportunity to play college football anywhere in the country. You could have gone to an HBCU school. Where'd he go? He went to Florida State. Mm -hmm. He played for Bobby Bowden. Why? Because he's looking out for himself. Then another decision, you could have stayed at the HBCU school you were coaching, yeah. but you didn't. You left. And not only did you leave, you took all the great players you were bragging about recruiting with you because you were looking out for yourself. So when NFL GMs look out for their self-interest by drafting who they think is the best player, then what are you talking about? This guy is a snake oil salesman to me, a grifter of the highest order. And now there's 25 players from Colorado in the transfer portal. Maybe that's just because they can't cut the mustard and they're not up to the Coach Sanders uh, you know, standard for what he's setting there in Colorado, or maybe it's because people are catching on to this. Well, it's, it's like that scene from Eastbound and Down when Kenny Powers is on Sports Sesh and th that show. And the, the one guy who played for a long time was like, yeah, you know, I just don't think it's a good look taking this contract. It's more about your relationship with the fans. And Kenny Powers looks at him and goes, then why don't you play for free, dog? Like, this is so hypocritical to me. You left the H. You did that. You went to an HBCU 
talked about how you were going to change the HBCUs and put them on the map. You were there for what, two seasons? First good-looking girl that looked your way, you bounced and took all the players. <laughs> I, like, how can you try and play both sides of this fence? Like, this is just, there's some things that are, you can kind of get away with. There's, like, nuance you can argue. We see it in politics all the time. You can argue your way out of it. There's no nuance to this. If you're, the thing about it is like, if you're good enough, they're going to find you. Yeah. It's, it doesn't, they don't care. They don't care what you look like, right? Or where you're from. What you, if you're a good enough player, they're, they're going to find you. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. But it's Deion Sanders. The, I mean, the biggest hypocrite in the world. So are you surprised? I'm not surprised. I mean, I understand the PR. I understand the prime PR, which is For just sure. be in the headlines, even if it's a negative thing, which mm -hmm. is it's not just a him thing. People are like, hey, as long as my name's in the paper, I don't care if it's good press or bad press. But I don't know. It's just not the way I operate. Mm -hmm. I, I was surprised to see it. All right, my best. I got a couple. I'm going to start with Stetson Bennett. Mm, shocked me. There we Stetson. go. Shock of the draft. Come around. Fourth round pick. I believe he went at 120. Look at that specimen right, right here. There. I tell you what, what a long wave we've come, boys. You need insurance? Fourth round, 128th <laughs> pick to the Rams. Who knows? Imagine Look, if he didn't get the public in I don't just like Stetson Bennett, but I always thought he was just surrounded by greatness, which kind of everyone elevated what, how good he actually thought he was. But who knows? At this point, he'll probably go win three Super Bowls, be the Rams starter coming in after Stafford leaves, and just be the best thing since, I don't know, 2% milk, which I love. Four million. <laughs> My man got four million. Four wow. bones. Four million. I love Stetson it. got four million. I'm, I'm happy for him. Me too. I hope he does well. It's now, the Rams, reach. it's it, that early? You're I was shocked. Really? They Yes. He went, what, 128? 128, yeah. Fourth round. Look at the quarterbacks that went behind him. <laughs> I know. Like, it just, again, what if he didn't have the public in talks? Would this man have gone the third round? I would have been know. top 10 pick. Look, guy, all that talk about Stetson Bennett. You remember all that talk? Oh, it didn't really impress when he threw the ball. He impressed somebody. And Sean McVay, let's just... He knows what's going on when it he comes down knows. to quarterback. Exactly. Now, this guy, Stetson, in Los Angeles, just think about that for a minute. Oh, God. It's going to be a good time. Cowboy yeah. boots and cowboy uh -oh. hats. My <laughs> man's going to be drinking PBR, right, and then hanging out with Hollywood. Oh, my God. Again, well, same point. Hey, can sit behind Matthew Stafford for yeah. a bit. Perfect. Right? Perfect. And learn the offensive mind from Sean oh, McVay. He'll be the next Tom Brady. Great situation. I can't wait. Um, real quick, my worst, because I have another best I want to get to. Worst, Lions in the first round. What y'all doing? Yep. What y'all doing? Like, I get the whole... Running back play to a certain extent, but let's look what was really on the board at that point. You could have shirt up your. What's the Lions' problem? It's defense. It's defense, right? All the DB. It doesn't take a philosophizer to know, know what the problem is. Your secondary trash. Your D line is getting better. You got a young Aiden who's going to be a baller. Your linebacker core is mediocre, but you go get a running back. How do you not take Nolan Smith? Mm. How do you not take Nolan Smith? They would have had to set me on fire and cut my head off. The Eagles said, hey, we'll take him. Did they get uh, Kelly Ringo, too? Yeah, they yeah. got Ringo. They, they got Georgia and Alabama yeah. players. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Did you, no, well, the, literally, the Eagles, D-Lines, BG, Fletcher Cox, Jordan Davis, um, Sweat. Uh, who else? Who is from Mississippi State. Yeah, they got Hassan Reddick. Like, this my I really— And Nolan Smith. I, I, and Nolan Smith. Like, I really want to, if we can get to a—, a at some point, do a segment of the best group D lines ever assembled. Jalen Carter. And they like had ever, Hargraves. Remember who ever assembled? The ever assembled, like the Avengers. I really want to know what's the best D line. Hey, everybody out there on YouTube, really appreciate you guys. If it's your first time seeing us, if you watch us all the time, without you, there is no us. Wanted to let you know, we also do a live show. That's where these breakouts are coming from. Every weekday morning, 7.30 to 9 a.m. Eastern, 6.30 to 8 a.m. Central. Come check us out. We do live call-ins. We have great guests. We have a very interactive chat that we go to all the time. It is a, a true family here at Crane & Company when it comes down to the morning show. So make us part of your routine. Even if you're on the West Coast, like 4.30 in the morning, we all know you're up.